Welcome to another episode of Game Time presented this week by Nusenda Credit Union. I'm JP Murrieta and this week we are at Cimarron High School, home of the Rams and head coach Eloy Brazil. Thanks for joining us. Yes, sir. You're about Thank a you. dozen games into the season so far. Mm. How are things looking for your team? What kind of group do you have this year? Well, we have uh, six seniors and uh, we're eight and three right now, I believe. And um, well, we uh, we're looking for Probably a high ranking in the state. Hopefully have a home game at the end of the season. Just yeah. looking at this group, you got some size uh, this year. How yeah. does this group stack up against other teams that you've had in the past? I've never had this uh, height <laughs> before. Uh, this is probably the tallest team I've ever coached. So, yeah, it's, it's interesting, you know, trying to get them to jowl and stuff. But we, we, uh, we have a good group of seniors. With all that size, have you had to adjust your style of coaching at all? A little bit, yeah. I uh, we usually do a lot of running and gun stuff, and this year it's kind of get the ball into the post a lot. Um, Demetrius is uh, he's from the valley, and he's about six, seven, six, eight, and he does a good job on the boards. Cameron and Angelo are both about six three, so they're strong inside. And yeah. you came back to Cimarron High School after. Uh, Championship at Cimarron, championship at Springer, championship at Maxwell. What brought you back this time? Well, I've always been from here. I graduated here in 1972, and I've lived here all my life. But uh, it's kind of a hometown, hometown deal. And actually, this is my third time here. <laughs> I, uh, I went to Springer after 14 years here. Went to Springer, came back and coached a couple of years. And then the job in Maxwell opened up and they asked me if I'd go over there. So I went over there and then back over here again. What brought you into the coaching business in the first place? Uh, you know, I, uh, I graduated from here, like I say, in 72. Uh, we were the I w was the first team to play in this gym. And then I wanted to play college ball. I went to the College of Santa Fe and I played for Coach Sweeney there. Uh, did four years and I decided I wanted to be a coach. And you've been doing it for what, 40 plus years 40 at this point, some, right? 40 some years, yeah. Unbelievable, that's great. You yeah. have more than 650 career wins. You're about to pass legendary head coach Jim Holzman on the all-time wins list. What does it mean to you to be on a list with some of the names like Jim Holzman, Frank Castillo, Marv Sanders, Jim Murphy, Pete Schock, and of course, Ralph Tasker, and your name's right in there. What does that mean to you? Well, that's, it's quite an accomplishment, I'll tell you. And I, I tell everybody just because you're old, but uh, <laughs> you know, I, and Coach Holzman and I are good friends, and I, I really, when they say that I'm gonna pass him, it's kind of unbelievable. And I, uh, I really don't feel like doing that, but uh, I guess it's gonna happen. Well, another meeting that you have coming up real soon is a matchup against Maxwell. Yeah. And playing a school that you've been to before is nothing new to you, but what kind of experience is that when you go up against these schools that you yeah. used to coach at? Well, you know, it, it becomes a rivalry uh, between everybody. Uh, it's uh, hard to, uh, sometimes you have people that don't understand that it's a job and you're doing the best you can for the school that you're at. So even when I was in Springer and I'd come over here because it was the big time, um, rivalry there and so some people don't understand it and there's a lot of sometimes uh, how can I say uh, I won't say animosity but uh, it, it gets to be a, a little heated yeah, yeah, yeah at some point I'm yeah. sure yeah. how do you size up class 1a at this point well right now it looks like Magdalena and uh, Fort Sumner are the top dogs I hear Melrose is pretty good uh, and then after that our district uh, Maxwell and Des Moines are going to be good so hopefully, you know, but looking at it right now, I would say that uh, Magdalena and, and uh, Fort Sumner are, are the ones to beat. And of the group that you have, who do you rely on this year? Who do you expect to carry a lot of the load for you guys? Uh, by players, you mean? Yeah. Well, we have uh, John, he's a senior, John Grasnick. He's uh, from the Valley also. And uh, he, he's uh, been our leading scorer the last uh, two years. So he, he does a good job and then, we have two freshman guards, uh, uh, Uriah Martinez and Logan, uh, that are doing a good job. So, uh, and then we have our seniors. I mean, everybody's doing a good job. Actually, my bench has come out and uh, won a couple of games for us. So, you know, the talent that we have, we have 14 boys, and I can probably put any one of them in at any time, and they're doing a good job. And lastly, as we approach March, in the two months leading up to the state tournament, what do you hope to see from your team? What do you hope to get out of them? What mm -hmm. direction you hope to get? What do you want them to improve on? 
Well, I, I think I think you know uh, one thing that I've always kind of I don't know why, but I've always been proud that my teams are playing well in February, and so we uh, we kind of try to pace ourselves and be ready for that February push. Uh, I used to like the old days when you won district and you know you had a better seed, but now every win is important, and and uh, so we try to we're going to really try this year to have that better record so that we can have a home game this year. All right, well, good luck to you. Thank good you, luck sir. the rest of the way. And Thank congratulations you. on a fantastic career that's still going. Well, hopefully. <laughs> Thank you. All yeah. right. Yeah. We'll be back with more game time after this. Are you living the life of an athlete? The New Mexico Activities Association brings you Life of an Athlete, a resource for students, educators, and parents to understand the challenges students face. Athletes, one night of drinking will negatively affect your athletic performance for two weeks, and athletes who drink or do drugs are twice as likely to get injured. Alcohol's effects can reduce a high school athlete's potential by as much as 20 to 30%. Are you living the life of an athlete? Log on to the website to find out today. The New Mexico Activities Association is excited to announce the NMAA 24-7 mobile app. Whether you're a student, coach, parent, or player, you can have the power of the NMAA right in the palm of your hand. Find scores and schedules, follow your favorite teams, receive special offers from NMAA sponsors, get state championship information, highlights, features, and much more. Download the free NMAA 24-7 mobile app in the App Store or Google Play. Get it now. Last year, we had to change so many games. We had to, you, you probably got frustrated because you thought you were gonna play on a Tuesday and then we did not have officials, so we had to move the game to Thursday and football now is on a Thursday and not on a Friday and Saturday. Well, that is all due to not having enough officials because of the bad behavior that is going on within our games. And that's parents included and spectators. It's everybody's responsibility. We, we all talk about is it the coaches, is it the administrators, is it the community member? It's gotta be all of us doing it together because if we all do it together, then it's a lot easier to solve the problem. Treat people the way you wanna be treated. Do you really want someone to yell at you? Do you want someone to sit there and yell at a kid or whatever? If that was your kid, would you want someone yelling at them? No, you wouldn't. I mean, so to me, treat people the way you wanna be treated, act the way you think should, you know, people should behave. And I think we should all be golden. Set the example. Set the example for everybody around you. Winning is fun. Winning is rewarding. Winning is an important goal. But the number one reason kids take part in athletics and activities is to have fun. Don't ruin their experience with inappropriate language. Negative behavior can be embarrassing to your student. Know your role. Your role is to support your student in a positive manner. Not to coach, not to referee, but if you're interested in officiating, we can direct you on how to become an official. Call me after this video and I'll be happy to set you up. The way parents behave in the stands has a big influence on how their child enjoys their experience. Let's compete with respect, integrity, and responsibility. We are gonna have an administrator at every single contest to make sure that our parents, that our fans, that our coaches, our athletes are behaving appropriately and we go back and realizing why we play high school sports, and that is for the friendships, for the love of the game, and to learn lifelong skills.
Hi, my name is Cameron O'Neill from Cimarron High School and welcome back to Game Time. Welcome back to Game Time, presented this week by Nusenda Credit Union. This week we're at Cimarron High School, home of the Rams. But before we wrap up our basketball talk, I wanted to give a shout out to Del Norte High School guard Shane Duma Sanchez, the senior put up 60 points last week against El Dorado. He scored 60 of his team's 67 points in a loss to the Eagles. His 60 point total ranks in the top 10 of all time single game performances in New Mexico. I was just trying to do everything I could yeah, really to get back in the game because we were down by 18 at one point. So that's just all that was going through my mind. I didn't really know I was breaking records and stuff. I was just trying to win the game. We were really, really struggling. And then Shane just pretty much took over the game for us. Um, I mean, he literally almost scored every point for us. And so uh, the crowd really started to get into it, especially once he started to got 50. And um, they kind of knew it was a special night too. When I was watching the game, you never even thought that he had, like I thought he had 30 or 40, but, um, but he's just so smooth and everything comes so easy that, um, I mean, he shoots the ball so well that, I mean, you don't even real realize that he's putting up points like he is. Duma Sanchez is averaging over 34 points a game, which leads the state of New Mexico. His average is one of the 10 best in the country. The Knights have games against Highland, Socorro, and Manal this week. Switching gears to wrestling, Farmington High School is a two-time defending state champ, and they have an individual state champ that has won 56 of his last 58 matches, and it's been an emotional ride. Farmington High School's Ivan Smith is coming off a first place finish at the conflict at Cleveland, winning four of his five matches by pin. He has incredible strength, lower body strength and, and, and speed um, that a lot of athletes just can't uh, compete with. Um, and and then in the process, he he's just learning how to become a better technician every day. Smith admits when he first got into wrestling 10 years ago, he had a different understanding of the sport. So at first I thought it was kind of like WWE. So I was like, hey, I want to fly off the ropes. And then it was obviously way different, but it just kind of stuck to me once I started getting the flow of things. Last year at State, Smith and his sister Ebony both won individual state titles. It was something that you could only ever picture. Like just seeing her win a state title, we just uh, everybody is like, up, oh, you're up next, you know? You had to, and especially her knocking off the state champ before, I had, even though she's my little sister, I had a lot to live up to. But the path to winning state was an emotional one. Ivan and his sister lost their father, who died suddenly last year. Their, their father wrestled for me when I was an assistant uh, back in the, in the 90s, and um, it was a sudden loss. It was, was not expected in any means. If you look back at the state finals last year, um, the assistant coach was holding a t-shirt up of the dad's picture, and it's still close. There's two passings of us. I saw one from our team, my club team. It was a fellow wrestler, and he passed a good while back ago, and we made t-shirts to commemorate for him. And then the other one was from my dad. He was the biggest influence I had. Currently with a 26-1 record, Ivan is one of the wrestlers to beat again this year. He says he embraces the challenge. I like the target. I like being a target. I like having the pressure on me. Oh, anytime you're repeating, you feel the pressure, but you got to embrace it because not everybody has that pressure. Heading into the state event, Smith and the Scorpions come in with the crown as others try to knock it off. Farmington, along with other premier wrestling programs from around the state, will be in Albuquerque this week for the annual Joe Vivian Tournament. That's going to do it for another episode of Game Time, presented this week by Nusenda Credit Union. Make sure you tune in every week, because the best place to find the most highlights is right here. We'll see you next time on Game Time.